Sadly, there are a lot of terrible managers in the world. However, what is quite interesting is how consistent they are with their mistakes, because basically it boils down just to a handful of different things. And so in this video, I am going to walk through what I believe are the top five most common management mistakes that are made and how you can combat them. Let's get into it. So, um, the first one I'm going to talk about is simple, very simple. They have too many re reportees. And what I mean by that is they try and manage too many people. Now, my belief is if you're managing direct, and I mean directly managing, not dealing with rotors or anything like that. I mean, you directly manage more than four to five people. That is too many. And that is true whether you're managing juniors, whether you're managing your seniors, whether you're managing a senior leadership team, whether you're managing a board of executives. Four to five people is your absolute max. And the reason why I say that is because management takes time. Good management takes time because you have to give up time for training, for interaction, for dealing with, for checking, all these different things. And if you're having too many, you literally just spread yourself too thin and you can't have the conversation that you need to have. You don't get into the detail, you don't get into the depth, you lose track of little things and that's where mistakes start to happen. And what's interesting about management is, yes, I know there are some terrible people out there, but it's amazing how often like bad management is just done through in ill consideration or just not even being aware that you're doing it or letting people down. And so having too many people, it's one of the first questions I ask when anyone asks me this is, you know, what is my, why am I struggling? All that sort of thing. I say, how how many people directly brought into you? And it's amazing how many people go, oh, about 12 or 14. Think how often you need to talk to someone to directly manage them and think about how that must be at times 14 people across the board. It's just too many. Um, so that's one of the first big ones that I'm going to talk about. Managing too many people. If you have four to five people, great. If you have more than that, you need to hire senior people to start taking some of those people off. You need to split it. You need to re look at your management structures, etc. You can't have that many people. You just start to get stretched, but too much. The second big problem that I see is around delegation. Now, what's quite interesting is I see both sides of the coin here in the sense that sometimes people don't delegate enough. And the problem with that, is if you don't delegate at all, you become a real bottleneck when nothing gets done. Everything has to go through you. You become an enormous time drag where everyone's basically waiting for you to sign stuff off or check or all that sort of thing. And you have that awful feeling of just being completely micromanaged, which is one of the most dispiriting things ever as an employee. But secondly, you can go the other way in the sense of people just get delegate far too quickly, whether it's a bit of laziness, they haven't got enough time, they kind of want to hit the ground running and all that sort of bullshit that people sort of throw out there. And so what I mean by that is you can't just expect someone to show up, you throw an enormous amount of work from them and just watch them drown under the weight of either doing a job that they're not trained for, they're certainly not being paid for, you know, they've not been kind of given time to get on board, all that sort of thing. And people just crack down the middle, they try and take on too much. Um, and so that's the other side of it as well. So when, it, when I talk about delegation, you've got to do it in stages, right? You, you've got to hand stuff over. That's step one. But you can't just throw it at them and just watch them sort of slowly buckle under the pressure. And so what you need to do is actually just start to do it in phases. So step one is, so let's talk about an email with a client. Say. So step one would be, right, you write in the email for me. Let's draft it up. I'll review it and see what you think and give you pointers. The second stage of that would be, right, you know, I'm happy with it. You've got this, but why don't you sort of cease, email the client, but CC me in just so I can keep an eye on it. And the third stage is, look, you've got it. You can now crack on. Do you see what I mean? You do it in stages rather than just going, here you go, here's the client, not going to get a handover, etc. just crack on. Um, and that's where that mistake is. And equally, what you can't have saying, oh, don't worry, I'll email the client, I'll email the client, I'll email the client, because you become too much boss mate. So delegation, getting that balance right between giving people enough work, but also not just throwing too much at them is one of the key skills of management and where I see a huge amount of people fall down. The next is criticism. Now, it is really important that you tell people when they're doing something wrong. Most mistakes are made through ignorance rather than being a deliberate mistake, right? Especially if you're on the junior side and you've not been in the job long, etc. There is an expectation you make mistakes because, hello, you know that's how human beings work. And so it's really important you have a duty as a manager to train people up. And part of training up is acknowledging mistakes helping them so make not sure they don't do it again and all that sort of thing. However, where I see people fall down is one, managers don't tell people when they're making small mistakes and they let it build up and they let it build up and they let it build up and then it all comes out in the sort of, in the wash and everyone's suddenly, and, and the employees been making mistakes, they have no idea they've been made, but suddenly it's a huge deal because no one's kind of had that chat with them. The second problem I see is when managers just lose their temper and tell them. That's the worst thing you can do. The worst thing you do is emotionally manage someone. And what I mean by that is if you see someone to make a mistake, the 
best way to do it is in your next formal catch up, which we'll come on to. You need to have that conversation where you basically say, look, um, you know, these two or three things you've done really well this week. The one area I would say you need to sort of have a look at is I noticed this has happened a couple of times and this is how we want to do it. Now, if you're not sure how that means, let me know. We'll book in time to go through it or you can speak to someone else or all that. So do you see what I mean? You need to tell people when they're doing something wrong because it's just not fair to not tell them. However, you have to do it in a way that you're not shouting, you're not being aggressive and all that sort of thing, because that's one of the worst things you can do as a manager. So how you give constructive criticism is one of the biggest failings, because either people, like I say, just don't do it and then just suddenly crack and just, you know, just go, oh, they're all just shit or etc., which is just not right. But also they way too jump on people way too quickly in a temper, being cross, etc. And that's one of the worst things you can do as well. The next one is around having proper conversations regularly. And I mean proper management discussions regularly. So too often people get confused between management catch-ups and like day-to-day catch-ups. Now day-to-day catch-ups is basically what your job what's on the what's on the docket for this week. What do we need to get done today? What do we need to get done this month? Have you done this piece of work? Have you spoken to this client? Have you check this report, all that sort of, all the sort of day-to-day stuff you do. That is not management. That's just kind of part of your job. When I talk about regular management catch-ups, I mean managers about that individual. What are they doing well? What are they doing badly? How's their progression going? Are they happy? Any concerns? Are you, you know, any worries that they have? You know, are they settling with this new team? Are they happy with the direction? Do they feel they're getting enough time with all these sort of things that literally is a conversation about them, not their work, but about them. Now, my recommendation is you do that once every two weeks. And this goes back to my first point, people trying to manage too many people, because if you have too many people, you can't do it once every two weeks. And it's really important to have that regular catch up. And I'll explain why. Think about how often people go into annual reviews, polar opposites and what they're expecting. People go in expecting loads, much bigger pay rise than they're going to get. People think they might be doing really well when they're not. And you have these weird discussions where you just so clearly aren't on the right page. And the the only reason that happens is because you're not having those regular catch-ups every two weeks. You've got to be dealing with all that stuff as the year progresses. You can't just wait for six months and then sort of completely pull the rug out from under them. So it's really important you really think about that because it's something I see people really sort of let themselves down on. It's simply because they're not spending the time to do that. So when it comes to like the big meetings like quarterly reviews, bonus chats, annual reviews, pay rises, etc., you're everyone's already know where you're at, right? You kind of know where you're going to be because you're having all these sort of small micro conversations where you can catch problems before they exacerbate, you know, all these sort of things. And so you need to be meeting with them once every two weeks. You really, really do. And this conversation needs to be about them, not about the works. You can't sit in that meeting and go, by the way, how's that, you know, how's this going, all that sort of thing. It needs to be around like, are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you feeling challenged? Do you have any worries? You know, all these sort of very basic management conversations that are very easy to have if you're doing it regularly. But if you sort of end up too long, and management's like revision, right? If you leave it all to the last minute, you're going to make your life so much harder for yourself. So it's really important that you actually get that right. Finally, I'm going to say it's going to work, and it's a bit of a cliched word, but it's one of the most important, and it's honesty. Now, what I mean by that is I'm not, you know, talk about confessing your deepest, darkest secrets or telling loads of really personal information about what's going on in your life. That's not, you know, unless it's something you need, you know, you need support on from the workplace. That's none of the work's business, right? Um, it's none of work's business unless it's impacting work. And if it's impacting work, you know, you want your work and your manager to be supportive and helpful. So that's the only time when you need to get honest around that sort of stuff. What I mean by honest is I mean from the management perspective to the employee, because you want to be honest about how the business is doing. Is the business doing well? Because if it is, great, here's how things are exciting. You've got to talk about the broader picture a little bit more rather than just the really granular of the day-to-day job. So if the business is going well, is that good for me? Is that good for my career? I'm really interested in what's, you know, here's the opportunities, all that sort of thing. If the business is going badly, that's also important to tell because people appreciate the honesty. You might say, look, we need to like really sort of band together to kind of really work on this. And, you know, just a heads up, like the Christmas party might be a bit shit this year because of this, this, this. You know, the reason why numbers are tanking is because we lost that big client or, you know, the economy is struggling or this, you know, region's struggling for whatever reason. There's only so many reasons why a business might be doing badly. But employees like being treated like adults because they are adults. They're not kids. They understand fundamentally that some businesses sometimes go through some rough patches. And my honest belief is if you'd be honest about that and explain the reason, also explain, you know, how management are trying to put, do the extra work to kind of get us back on track. You know, the respect element is absolutely key there. And so I really do think that's an important one. So yeah, it's a really interesting topic. Um, those that, And like I said, it's amazing how when you actually sort of pick through all the sort of awful boss stories and managements, how often these five themes in particular crop up. So it's a really important one. Um, please do comment any further sort of cliches you think there are out there. Um, but yeah, these are the top five from me. <laughs>